Welcome to the AK Show. I am your host, Amy Kardashian, not Kardashian. On this show, we bring inspirational stories. We empower and encourage humanity through inspiration, knowledge, and education. On this show, I have very special guests, and I feel so honored to have him with us here. After you watched his introduction, you are going to understand what I'm saying. So here you go, we're gonna introduce him right now. Maestro Televignon is one of the leading conductors of his generation, having led many of the world's most famous orchestras. He was born in Beirut, Lebanon, to Arpine Pelavignon, a Lebanese-Armenian classical coloratura soprano singer who fled Lebanon during the Lebanese Civil War. He immigrated to Los Angeles in 1975, beginning his career as a violinist before being trained in conducting by great masters such as Pierre Boulez, Lauren Mazel, and Ferdinand Leitner. In 1991, he became the first American to win the grand prize in France's Bezon Fon International Conductors Competition. In June 2014, he was bestowed the Golden Medal from the Ministry of Culture of Armenia, the highest possible honor given to an artist by the Armenian government. In winter 2017, he made history as the first conductor of Armenian descent to conduct the Presidential Symphony Orchestra of Ankara. He has led orchestras around the world and became professor of orchestral conducting at the Conservatoire National Supérieur de Musique et Danse de Paris, where he was bestowed with the title of Honorary Director and Consultant of Music Education of the Comunidad de Madrid. In 2010, he became artistic director and founder of the Touquet International Music Masters Festival in La Touquet, France, one of the world's top festivals for young artists today. Well, uh, let's welcome the Maestro. Uh, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Well, it is great to have you with us. You, you have established a lot of things that many people will dream to get to where you are today. And I know how hard it is yes. to really reach to that level. Um, so my question to you is this: How, how did you, how do you feel where you are at now? First of all, I feel like I'm very fortunate to have had and lived the life that I lived uh, throughout my quite long life already. Uh, I must say that uh, at the moment I feel like I'm just beginning. You're just beginning. Yeah. Uh, you established all this and you're just feeling you're just beginning. I'm just scratching the surface. That's wow. how I feel. Yeah. Wow. I right. mean, you know, how many people really get to, uh, to be where you at and, and uh, just travel around the world? And my understanding, you speak how many languages? Almost nine. Yeah. Not almost nine languages, yeah. Yeah, 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 nine. and you're just feeling like you're just beginning here <clears> right now. <throat> well, you know, life is uh, for me uh, philosophical, but there are cycles and seasons that we go through. I think mm -hmm. in life, um, a, a majority of my life has been passed already. It were in training and in gaining experience and becoming uh, who I'm supposed to be which was uh, very early on in my life, but at 27 years old, I won the world competition, number wow. one. So that grand prize winning was really the uh, opener for the international career. But that just began. That was not, I didn't uh, achieve, uh, let's say, where I need to go. I just began just at that beginning. time to do my career. Now it's been 30 years, up approximately. But I feel that uh, there's a new, uh, a new wind has come upon me, and new I'm, challenges. It's just, right? it's just a new season. It's and challenges are always there. I mean, I've conducted over 300 orchestras and opera houses in the world. I mean, there's not too many top-rated orchestras that I haven't conducted. I mean, there are still a few, of course, I want to see and be with. Um, but after a while, when you have done so much in your life, you begin to think of uh, what life is about and what you're doing on this earth and uh, what you want to do later on. And all these things come up 
as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and now I have different goals and I want to do different things in life, reach different audiences and uh, millions and millions more than Absolutely. I have. With well, the music. your story is very inspirational. That's, that's, I must say that. <clears throat> now, most people, they think just because you speak nine languages and because you are great in what you're doing, success was handed to you. Right? Because they think, okay, you speak nine languages, you are great what you're doing, and so what's, what's not to get to where you're at? But that's not the reality. That's not reality. It doesn't, it's not only being smart, it's not only being good at what you're doing. What else you were faced with to get to where you're at today? Uh, it took a lot of perseverance. I have made a lot of mistakes in my life. And I believe that's the mistakes is the only pathway to success. And which kind of mistakes would you... you any, you, any sorts of mistakes. I mean, you know, from small to big. From, uh, for me, but mistakes are not negative. Mm -hmm. Mistakes are things that we learn from to get to where we need to get. It's a very positive um, process. And I want to encourage our viewers and uh, everybody that don't get, uh, don't allow life to bog you down Take with you its down. problems. Because uh, for me, I don't see problems as such. I see more challenges than problems. Um, it's, a, it's a, you know, Armenians, you know, we are in an Armenian show. Uh, I, I believe that we are blessed with a very hard working uh, character. I hardly know Armenians that don't know how to work hard. But it's in our yeah, blood. Yeah, the, you, you can find that. So, too. and, you know, for the Ar Armenians that come from, I don't know, Middle East, uh, or, you know, I mean, speaking five languages is, is normal. So I don't believe that uh, I speak nine languages and it's exceptional. Okay, it is exceptional, but... But for us that, that come from the Lebanon or in Egypt or Syria, I mean, we, we speak, especially in Lebanon. Three languages at minimum, least, yeah, min minimum. I grew up speaking three languages. Yeah. English is my fourth language. And then I learned Russian, I learned French, I learned uh, German, Italian, Spanish, uh, of course, uh, Arabic. Uh, but, you know, th this is just normal. Some Hebrew now and, you know, some Slovenian. And, but that's because I love languages. I love traveling. I, I've traveled all the continents. And what I find so satisfying is that um, I can do what I love and not, uh, it's not a job for me, mm -hmm. it's a passion. And it, not only is it for me a passion, but when I do it, performing, it brings joy and happiness to other people in the public of course, and, and yeah. the orchestra, so, or singers. You know, and you see that, opera. you see that when you're conducting, mm -hmm. you could see the passion. Oh, that's good. That's yeah, good. you yeah. can yeah. feel yeah. it like you're in right. the moment and yes. the, how passionate you are. <clears throat> so yeah. passion, would you say passion alone is not enough? No. Talent alone is not enough. Absolutely not. Would you Absolutely agree? What is, yeah. other, yeah. what is the other piece of the puzzle that you need to have? I say that it's actually 90% hard work and 10% talent. I agree with you yeah. on that. And, yeah. and, the last, and, and then when you work hard, it's the last 5% that is the toughest to achieve. And a lot of people, they think, well, yeah. why should I work hard uh, and uh, I, I should work smart, not hard? Now, you need to have the combination. I agree, I agree. It's the balance, it's the <clears throat> fine line. I think it's a, it's a question of concentration. It's a, mm -hmm. Quality is more than quantity, right? That's right. So when I used to practice the violin, if I was working, practicing three hours to four hours quality, it meant more than if I practiced six to eight hours just playing, mm -hmm. right? So, but there was a moment where I was uh, in my uh, late teenage years where, uh, <clears throat> I was practicing six hours a day, and that's how I got to Carnegie Hall. I gave my debut in Carnegie Hall, and I became one of the top 12 violinists in the United States. Just because you, you, you put in your mind, this is what I want. Yeah. So would you agree that when you are working, whether you're working hard or you're not working hard, if you feel like you're sacrificing your time instead of being like you were young, right? Instead of being with your friends, going out and doing some stuff, right? You're, you're sitting and practicing for eight, six hours or whatever it might be. If we're practicing, yeah. do you <clears throat> feel when you practice, I'm not, I'm, I'm feeling this is my passion and this is not sacrificing? You know, uh, I have to say that I, I, when I was younger, working hard, I really didn't think about all this. 
I have to confess that I did not see the future as I have now today where I am. I did not see where I was going to go. All I knew was I had a passion for music and all I knew was to play because m my goal was perfection. You have to understand as a musician, when I'm playing the violin or anybody playing any instrument, at least my goal was to be perfect in what I did. And it consumed me, the perfection consumed me to drive me to work for hours. It, yeah. was, it was not because I needed to, I, I knew you that I needed to work to. hours yeah. so that I become better. I knew I was gonna get better, I was already good, but I wanted to be perfect for myself. Mm -hmm. I wasn't just practicing and working hard to be a star. Yeah. That was not my goal. So it wasn't no, sacrificing. You weren't sacrificing your life. I'm young. I need to go have fun. You were doing it because you feel it. You want it. You want it to be the best. It was my conviction Con that I, I wanted to become perfect at what I did. Mm -hmm. And perfection, when you face perfection face to face, you're basically, you can't achieve it. But you, that gives you even more challenge to try harder. And when you try a passage or a concerto and you achieve at the concert, to do it as perfect as you can without really making mistakes, then it's a real satisfaction. Yeah. Not a lot of people can play a concerto without mistakes. Even today, famous musicians that go on stage, which they go on stage with me all the time, the world's best go on me on stage to play. They, they make mistakes. Even the best in the world, they, sure. it still happens. So we're not robots, we're humans. And that's the whole passion, is that to, to achieve as close as possible to some of the beauty that we create in art and the perfection that there is in a flower or in a, in a plant or in an animal. It's perfect. We as humans are perfect. Yeah. There's no fault in us. Mm -hmm. So, and I think that as, as we are created, we are creating. Absolutely. And, and this is what for me is, is, is incredible. And is, uh, the fact that I can play or, or conduct an orchestra today, 100 people, and unite them in one spirit and they can follow me and we can create beautiful music to bring goodness and love and, and uh, harmony. joy, harmony, harmony to the public and to the world. For me, that's a great honor. Absolutely. When we come back, we're going to go on short commercial. Okay. When we come back, we're going we're gonna to share more insights okay. to help people really understand how you get to succeed to where you <clears> are, <throat> not only you're passionate. Right. What, what's the other piece of the puzzle that okay. you're going to share with us today? So we will be right back. Hi, my name is Amy Kardashian, not Kardashian. When I came to the United States, I did not speak English at all. I had no education, no skills, barely any money in my hands, and I had 10-year-old daughter to raise. However, giving up was not an option for me. In order to survive and thrive, I had to shift my thoughts and apply all of the insights, wisdom, and the lessons I learned throughout my journey to get and have everything I want. Today, I am an author, TV talk show host, a keynote speaker, a special liaison officer for the Women's Federation for World Peace USA. This is how I am paying it forward today. I have created four online classes where I share steps, techniques, and powerful insights that I have used in my life that will give you clear direction on how to transform your thoughts from wanting to having everything you want. And the first class is my gift to you. There is absolutely no obligation to you. So what are you waiting for? You have nothing to lose and everything to gain. Start shifting your thoughts today so you can transform your life like I did. I encourage you to take action now. Click on the link and see what's in store for you. And we are back with an amazing maestro, 
and it's, it's an honor really to hear from someone who really, you weren't handed everything. And uh, to hear the insights from you, encouraging other people to tell them, listen, I mean, I had a passion about the music. I practiced a lot, because a lot of people, they do have passion, they practice, they're perfectionists, but then there is another piece of the puzzle where they have to really run it as a business. And a lot of artists have a hard time to switch their minds from being an artist, being inside you know, the music or the acting, mm -hmm. and knowing how to really basically run it like a business, you're gonna call it that way because it's a shift mm -hmm. from here to here. What is your, how did you do that? How did you shift? Well, I stayed uh, and I always will stay as an artist. I will not switch to something else. The business part of it is very simple. I have managers that take care of my, my calendar and my career. I don't do it myself. I have, I've had many, many great managers that represent me. Uh, and so that's how we do it in our world of uh, music making, is that we have people representing us. You have, so basically what you're saying, in the beginning of your career, where you went through obstacles, and mm -hmm. you, did you went through a time mm -hmm. for any artist or anyone trying to start something they love to do, whether speaking, mm -hmm. a new business, or whatever it might be, we can be good in everything. Mm -hmm. So in the beginning of your career, uh, did you were able to hire somebody right away or you had to take over and mm -hmm. basically run everything did you went through any of that yeah it's a combination I mean when I when I actually won the world competition I immediately had a manager in Vienna mm -hmm. immediately uh, actually one of the jury members became my manager he was a How about before manager. you get to that I actually before that I was not a conductor I didn't really uh, have a career I was a violinist okay. and I struggled and I remember I had very very difficult times in my life where uh, I couldn't find work actually I could I was playing some concerts but I was doing some orchestra concert master uh, but I, I couldn't really find myself the uh, the work that I needed and that's actually the story of thousands of musicians that exactly. graduate yes. from college from conservatories is that we are all fighting for one seat in an orchestra. Absolutely. So, for example, when there's a first flute audition or a second clarinet audition or a violin audition in any philharmonic in the United States or in the world, mm -hmm. there are hundreds of applicants that are trying to get that one spot. So it's a very, very discouraging and uh, tiring process for musicians that are to young fight to, get there, to right? find their way mm -hmm. into the music world and work. Yes. Okay, and a lot of uh, my colleagues actually never made it in an orchestra. So they diverted to chamber music playing or teaching, which is not anything less. It's beautiful. It's a great life. You know, or very few from those who work very hard that want to become a soloist like Yasha Heifetz, mm -hmm. one in a million make it as a that's soloist. That's amazing. And, and that's, this is so. why it's this, it, this is applies basically to everything in, in any career mm -hmm. someone have a passion for restaurant <laughs> how many restaurants really they open and they close how okay. many yeah. people fight for or they yeah. um, basically uh, they want to become an actors yeah. or yeah. singers yeah. 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 they they have they have they're fighting against yeah. too many people no. yeah. and that time I have to say how you how did you the, hold yourself the thing is that you know I am now you know I've been teaching for a long time I'm professor of Conservatoire National de Supérieur de Paris and the Superior Conservatory in Madrid, and I have been helping young conductors, for example, in my profession. They come and they, they learn from my, my lessons. I give master classes, I give teachings, I, I help young conductors, I give Find them keys way. of how to conduct better, number okay. one. How to, if you, because if you're not a good conductor or a great conductor, there's, nobody's going to hire you. You have to be good, and like any other métier. In my case, my program in Madrid and in Paris and in France where I teach are successful because I'm able to take these young men and women that come uh, that are already professional musicians, train them in such a way that they can go out and begin their career. 
So basically, you're saying to find a mentor or to find someone who's done it before. Absolutely. To to hold them and guide them throughout the process. Absolutely. So right. if 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 anybody out there is a, uh, wanting to be a conductor and wanting to make conducting a, uh, one of your passions in your life. Uh, you can contact me by writing my webpage, georgepelivanian.com. Okay. And you can send me a message, and my assistant will send you uh, uh, dates and places where I'm where teaching master classes and programs, how you can follow, how you can become. A, you know, I have, I have musicians that played uh, with Claudio Abado, an orchestra, first flute, that is now conducting. I have musicians that are principal violas in big orchestras, that are concert masters in big orchestras that have a desire to conduct. They've contacted me, they are my students, and they have orchestras today. So they are conducting. In sure. one year, in two years, they're out, and they're conducting. Why? Because I teach them. A lot of people in my position in the world don't teach. Mm -hmm. First of all, because they don't know how to teach, perhaps. Number two, they're selfish. They don't want to give their secrets That's, away. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you, I don't so care how you famous you are, you, you want to keep your own uh, success sometimes yeah. to yourself. And I don't do that. I believe in giving, and as I give, it will be given back to me. Absolutely. That's my principle. I, uh, this lesson will go to anything else anyone wants to do in life. Uh, yeah. Find a person who yeah. is willing to share their knowledge like yourself right. and not just keep it for yourself that's possible find a mentor find a teacher find someone yeah. who can help you i believe you had a teacher at one time and the most the, the biggest teacher you had is your mother is that yeah, correct absolutely my mom can was we my... talk about her a little bit sure i'm so proud happy. she's armenian yes, and course. she has done a lot of good things and yeah. she's very known she was known yeah. in lebanon oh yeah and, and uh, the world. It, it just it's just amazing to talk about her. Can Absolutely. We yeah, we can see her, her, uh, her name was Akine Pehlivanian. She was a great, great singer. She was same caliber as Maria Callas. Wow. Soprano Lirico Loratura. And uh, she uh, traveled all over the world. And when I was a boy, she used to take me with her traveling. So I heard hundreds of recitals of her singing so as a boy. you grew up in that uh, environment. I Absolutely. I grew up in traveling. So I know what an artist is that travels, and uh, I know what the life of traveling artist is, how difficult it is to change airplanes and cars and hotels and then uh, diet and... People think everything just easy you when know, you're it's, successful. It's not easy. And my yeah. mother was a very hard worker. She was a pioneer in what she did. She's very known. She's uh, very known. She yeah. was one of the, the first, I think, women in, in Lebanon that actually wanted to do a career. Yeah. Because at that time, you know, women, you know, were... In traditionally, the 60s, basically. 50s and 60s traditionally stayed home mm -hmm. and took care of the family. My mom said, no, I have a voice, I'm going to sing. I'm going to sing. And so she did what very few women do. And I think she was a real pioneer. And I, I honor her because she passed already uh, 15 years now. Mm -hmm. But her memory stays with us. Absolutely. Uh, and if, if my mother wasn't as, as powerful and as, as a leader as she was, and radiant as the sun, because Arpine means also in Armenian, the sun. the sun. And she was very radiant. So when she walked into a room, you could feel immediately the energy. Yeah. So this, uh, this was handed down to me and to my sister, Elizabeth Pelivanian, who was a very great singer too. Nice. So, you know, we're, you know, I'm very thankful for mom for, uh, for believing in me. You know, one, she's the best teacher, right? <laughs> she was the best teacher. And yeah. she really encouraged me. And uh, she played the piano and uh, accompanied me when I was a kid uh, nice. on the violin. So she was there all the time encouraging me. Well, talking about this, I would like to show yes. something, of, uh, show some of uh, your oh, great. players. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're going to yeah. see now how passionate you are. Oh, really. great. It's, it's, it's amazing. Wonderful. I know you're going to enjoy what you're going to see right now, okay. if we could show that.
wow, 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 wow. That, that gives me like goosebumps. Knowing that I'm sitting right next to you here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, I know I'm, I'm always very proud when I see Armenians successful and other people, of course. But we know how hard it is, you know, for, for Armenians to prove themselves, you know, after a generation, your mother and uh, my father, uh, they had to work really hard. And I think they were a great example to us. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. Yeah. And then I know you're Lebanese like me as well. Yes. And you grew up in a war. Yes. You were 10 years old. So you yes. remember some of the, uh, you when you came here, you were 1975. Yes. So you fled here in 1975 yes. and I was stuck for in a war. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, um, we've been through amazing. challenges in life quite a bit. And I'm sure you had to face your own challenges. Can you share with us some of the challenges that you were faced with? I, I think I, my challenges are, are different than most people that were in the war because I was a really uh, small boy. So I don't really remember a lot of suffering in the war as mm -hmm. older generation people would. Um, my challenges were more in the sense of trying to be the best in what I do. And it's not easy to, uh, to try to climb the ladder in the world. Uh, maybe if we try to climb the ladder in, let's say, the Armenian diaspora or the Armenian community, that's a little bit less challenging. It's still challenging because we're a lot of smart Armenians and very, especially in business, uh, in engineering, in science, in athlete, athletics, uh, I think. But my goal was not just the Armenian community like I think my mother's was. She was very well known all over the world in the Armenian di diaspora. Mm -hmm. I wanted to go to the next step. To the next step. Take next it step. To the next step. I I'm sure yeah. that was her goal for you as well. It was. In right? fact, she told me when I, when I yes. won the world competition, she said, you know, Dras, you know, I made it in the Armenian diaspora. I, and I want you to. And you made it in the world. Nice. I'm so proud of you. Wow. Because what I, what I couldn't do, you did. You did. So she was actually very proud. Yes. Who wouldn't be of their child? So, but it was, I think, for me, a, a baton that was handed over to me by my mom. And it was a very uh, difficult uh, challenge. Because I have to say that I didn't just become like, you know, world famous uh, overnight or something. It was a very that's, difficult that's road. That's what I was getting yeah. into. Just because <clears throat> we speak nine, nine languages and you're yeah. good what you're doing and yeah. you had a yeah. mother in that, it didn't get you it to wasn't where enough. you, it wasn't enough. It wasn't right? enough. I have to say it, it is very challenging. One of the things I learned is that don't let other people's opinion dictate your future. Don't let other people's opinion dictate your future. That's beautiful. Uh, yes, and you know, it's totally true in my life because as I was uh, in college, my professors called me in their office in the conducting department and they sat me down and they said to me, George, you're, we believe that you're not a natural talent, that you don't have the knack to conduct. Wow. Yeah, you're just basically not talented. Wow. <laughs> so we really don't that want would crush you. anybody. <laughs> you know, can you imagine, you know, professors wow. sitting you down and telling you, don't conduct. And this is what I wanted to do, right, besides playing the violin. So as I walked out of that office, it, I had a choice, either to, to believe what other people tell me is true in my life, or really go deep inside of me and say, I know what I want to do. You just feel it. You well, just feel I, it in your I, I you knew, knew what I wanted to do. Yeah. I felt totally at home on the podium. Mm -hmm. I, do, I didn't have any concerts. I, nobody ever gave me a, reci a recital as a conductor. I have totally no, no future. And, and no matter what your mom, have, how successful she was, no, it didn't it, get you there. No, no. You had to get yourself there. I'm telling you. This is what got me there, is I decided not to believe other people's opinions about myself for my future. I didn't want to believe that. That is the big key. That was a big key. Because if I had decided that day to throw in the towel and say, okay, you know what, you guys are right, mm -hmm. you're my professors, and you don't think I have a talent, I don't have the talent. I'm just going to play the violin, right? I would have never made it in life. You know, a year and a half later after that episode, where my professors dic discouraged me from becoming a conductor, a year and a half later, I was number one in the world. Wow. Well, that, that encouraged so many people. Take and that. so many love it. Take that home, right? Take that. <laughs>
Yeah, <laughs> sleep on that, buddy. Yeah, yeah. I was number one in the world because I believed in myself. I, I didn't go to the competition to become number one. Mm -hmm. I went to the competition to do my best. That's and all. And I think that's a big key. When you really want to do something, do it because you feel like you want to be the best of it. Instead yeah. of saying, well, I want to dare just to compete. I want to dare because yeah. I'm competing with others. You just want to dare for what you believe inside of you. Is that correct? Yeah. I, be I believe in originality and personality. So if you're, or if you, you should really believe in who you are and develop who you can be, not try to be somebody else. And that's, that, okay. you know, I, and this, is, this is wisdom right there. Yeah. <laughs> this is a that, big time absolutely. wisdom. Yeah, that's what that got me. People, to, if you really yeah. adopt that in their life. But you have to become yourself. Absolutely. Do what you believe because that's you. Yeah. Your uniqueness. You're, you're, yeah, and, and when, I be, yeah. when I believed in myself, I said, I know I have a God-given talent, okay? Somebody gave me this talent. I better use it. Yes. So if somebody tells me, you can't conduct, you're no talented, and I know that I can do it, who am I going to believe? Myself. I want to confirm what you're saying right now. When I came to the United States, 1988, mm -hmm. people said, you're not going to make it in, in the United States. Okay. But I felt it that I'm going to make it. I'm here. I'm okay. meant to be here. Yeah. And nobody could say anything. So just okay. to confirm what you're saying, this is a powerful lesson here you're sharing with us. And that's going to inspire a lot of people because a lot of people, get they hear, yeah. you're not good at this. Or you, this is time. not for you. All and this time. is not for you. Yeah. And what a amazing to hear that from yeah. Someone like you who established things that people can just dream yeah. to establish. I can't tell you how proud and honored to be sitting next to you. Is I know how hard it is to get to where you at. It didn't. It wasn't handed to you. You had to get <coughs> up there and, and get the ladder and get out there and do whatever yeah. you needed. If to I do. may say just one more thing, sure. Just to add to that is that also. I also believe the darkest moment in your life, be careful because after the darkest moment in your life can come the sunrise. Now take that to the bank, right? And I have, <laughs> you can take this knowledge That's like proof this. in my life because I knew I was in the darkest moment, totally depressed, uh, broke up with my, at that time, girlfriend when I was in my, in my 20s. I had no direction, no concerts. I was totally dark. and. One of my friends said, you know, just change, go, go somewhere else, get out of this atmosphere, go breathe some fresh air. They said there's a competition in France of conducting, why don't you go and breathe new fresh air, go change yourself. You change know, your environment. Environment, and that's the, that's the real reason why I entered the competition. Wow. I, didn't, I, I didn't enter to win. I entered because I was so down, I didn't know what to do, I was lost. I, my heart was broken, darkest moment in my life was there, and somebody just told me there is another opportunity, go, breathe, change your atmosphere, get some, another fresh air. And I said, okay, I'll go. I was, I said, I was selected in, you know, in the world, uh, there's only 72 people selected, I was selected, I was... Only 72 people? Yeah, hundreds of people applied. And then you're against 72 people? 72 people all yeah. over the world came to France. And I went, and day by day, I was winning the competition. Wow. Day by day, going to the quarterfinals, semifinals, finals. You found, you found the light inside of you. The destiny found me. Yeah. Destiny found me, but destiny met me because I was willing to go. Mm -hmm. So for those who are down and don't know what to do in life, go get some fresh air. Go, yeah. go to another opportunity. Don't take no for an answer. There is another. If the door op uh, closes, there's a window that's going to open. Absolutely. For sure. You just have to look where the windows look are. Look for the light. And go. Yeah. Because after the darkest moment in the night comes the sunrise. The Absolutely. first sunrise comes after the darkest moment of the night. And that was my life. That is amazing. Mm -hmm. And I can't thank you enough for sharing your darkest time. Mm. and how you saw the light through darkness. Mm. That is so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much for being on my show. I'm very happy I to be here. I am very honored and um, would like, thank you, thank you. And mm. uh, would like to have you again 
on the show. Pleasure. Hopefully, maybe uh, next time next soon time. when you come to Vegas. I know you came to Vegas, so Pari Yegar. Merci, and, uh, Of course. <clears throat> and uh, for all of you there, I hope, I know you enjoyed the lessons and the uh, beautiful wisdom that um, uh, you shared with us. I, I um, will encourage you to always see light through darkness, look, look for the light through darkness. And uh, I hope to see you next week on the AK TV show. See you ne next time. <laughs>